Okay, so ready to start my game of Dominant Species. And really, this is a game where you're faced with a lot of choices right at the beginning with very little idea of what you want to do. And that's... I like to be able to be guided by simple choices. But there doesn't seem to be one here. Now, I'm looking at the insect. He's got his cylinder to place first because he's first on this list. And there's a few things. One, I could grab um, a domination marker and try to ensure that I'm going to score. But, you know, there are plenty of those available. Now, the question is, how many do I want? Well, I kind of want one, maybe. So, what it feels to me is that I want to enhance the number of species that I have on the board. I want to increase my, my presence on the board for the scoring rounds, perhaps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a speciation over here in the, uh, that looks like ocean, isn't it? I'm looking for, oh, yeah, in this water space, because that'll allow me to grow this water resource here. That would allow me to grow in the wetlands where I want to grow. Um, the savanna where I can exist. I don't want to build species where they're going to die. And all I have right now is the grass. I share that here. Of course the tundra is going to have it. So yeah, I'll go with this. That seems like a nice idea. That's going to put me on the spider next. And I got to think again. Basically, each action is taking me a significant amount of thought. I can't do it on camera. Uh, not with this game. It doesn't make enough sense. I'm doing too much calculation on each action to just think aloud. Spiders want to try something a little different. Uh, what they're looking at is hey, I'd like to make things I like, grubs, more popular. Now the first way to do this is look at the wanderlust because this would allow me to add tiles that appeal to me. So I could slap a tile here that makes a new location for grubs. And if there was a grub here I could increase my viability there. Alternatively I have the abundance where I can kind of push my way into already existing locations. It's hard to really decide which is better. At this point I like the Wanderlust adding a tile, but unfortunately I have to pick something that someone else likes and add that to the tile. So I can't just help myself this way. So that's kind of unappealing. Competition, I get to kill off enemies. That might be appealing too. Um, I'm in jungle, forest, wetland, and tundra. Jungle and wetland is a combination that I have possible. I could go for an additional competition and whack some more critters off the board. That's liable to piss people off, but maybe not that terribly. I'm going to start by populating and getting more grubs on the board. I don't really like the choices here. The C is nice, but I don't like the other choices, so I'm going to go for that. That puts me to the third one, which is the salamander. And the salamander really likes water, so I am going to go with a wanderlust action, because there is a C there, and I'd like to place that and expand maybe into here. So right away we're starting to advance. Glaciation unfortunately is kind of weird. It's not clear right away that it's valuable. It seems to be. But glaciation is going to score some points. Not many. Not at this point in the game. And it's going to cause a reduction of other players' stuff. So you push it in a direction away from your stuff, essentially. Does that sound reasonable? It does, but maybe it's not the best move at this point. We're on the birds. 
The birds like little nuts. They're pretty sure blue's not going to do that. Uh, they could increase their survivability, say, with bones by taking an adaption. That's appealing. They could become dominant here. But I think I'm going to go with a wanderlust as well. Because I don't think the salamander is going to take my wanderlust. And then I can put an ocean over here. Uh, whatever. Uh, so now, and yes, I'm able to think after I've done some thinking about it. Run the reptiles. No wanderlust ability. No abundance available for them. I could increase my species. Uh, I could create adaption. Let's see what adaption would do for me. I've got two sons. I might be interested in the grass up there. I might be interested in the bone there. I'm going to grab an adaption space. Now another option, of course, is to change initiative order for later turns to improve my positioning. By doing that, though, I'm walking away from this early choice, my first draft pick, as it were, at this point. And now the final pick is for the mammals, who could take a wanderlust, add more bones to the world. It's the last wanderlust available. The insects might want one. Yeah, I'll grab that. Now with my bugs, I've got another option here. I'm going to grab an abundance one. Put more grasslands out there. I don't want those going down into the uh, reductions that are liable to happen. And that gives me my buggies. Or my, uh, my other buggies. And what would they like to do? Would they like to adapt, gain more abilities? Would they like to speciate? Right now what they're doing is an abundance. Speciation is nice for getting score. Getting more critters on the board sounds a valuable option. So what would I like to speciate in? If I could choose to. Um, If I speciate on grubs, I get these three jungle and wetlands, which are both kind of rich areas that I can hit. So I'm going to go with that. Gives me my salamander. And you can see there's sort of this group thing type situation, like in an 18xx game or something else, where well, people are picking that. Why? You know, your attention gets attracted there. What is it I want to do? Well, I don't want to migrate, for example. I'm in pretty good shape where I am right now. Things aren't dying off. So what I may want to do here, I may want to get an adaption, uh, but there's nothing terribly valuable to me. Bones aren't going to help me terribly much at this stage in the game. So... Um, competition's always fun, but it's more interesting, you know, when there's someone you're targeting, or if you want to clear someone out of an area you want to score. Right now, I think, I too will go for speciation. The water that I like's already taken. The bugs that I like are already taken. So now it becomes a little more iffy. I could go for grasslands, and that would get me the same stuff as the water, but it wouldn't get me three areas to speciate in. I wouldn't be able to go up into the tundra. Mm. It's getting tough to find a slot. You know what I'm going to do? I'm. Uh, 
I'm going to grab the initiative slot. That's basically passing on this choice to be able to make a move here in ordering so that I'll have better choices next turn and I'll still keep my action point. That seems like I'm having trouble finding something I really want to do so it seems like the right time to do that. Over to the Boides. Um, they don't want to migrate far that's for sure so that's one of their bonuses. Um, they're pretty much guaranteed to get a domination space which is all you really need. So what about speciating? Nuts are good. Nobody else is going to want those. <laughs> puts me to the reptiles. And yes, a black on black table is why all the reptiles are on the card. The reptiles, maybe I want to adapt even more, pick up more ability to survive. On the other hand, I have to worry about other people speciating all over the place. Now nobody's probably going to take sun except me and desert and mountain. I'm not going to get a lot of pieces off of mine so maybe that's not the optimal. Um, I'm already adapting once. I don't know if I want to adapt twice. Am I worried about any regression? No. Not with what I'm taking. It's hard to find something. I'll go with the speciation, but it's really getting tough to find an action I really want to do. I certainly want to take actions. You know, I mean, glaciation, I get to hit other people. Competition, I get to hit other people. I'm not at a, a loss for anything to do. It's just a question of, well, what am I going to gain from? Um, over here with the human, uh, sorry, the mammals, um, adaption might be appealing. Although I'm not too close to anything I'd be adapting to. What about speciation? I could speciate on bones. That would get me into the forest. Why not? It seems like a good enough move. And now we're on the third and final choice for the insects. Not a lot left. I'm going to grab an adaption. I'd like to be water bugs. No reason I can't speciate more with my arachnids. Question is, can I survive? And this is where you start looking. If I'm, I'm not going to improve my critters. They only live in bug in uh, grub zones. So I don't really want to speciate into an area. I think I have to. Maybe I'm mistaken there. If it's a May, it may not be so bad. Yeah, it's up to, so I don't actually have to put my cubes where they're going to die. Um, so speciation may not be so bad. I could get some additional pieces on the board. Alternatively, though, oh, I haven't done a grassland speciation. Yeah, let's, oh, wait, I may not want to. Um, I don't know where my grubs are going. That's the problem. Yeah, why don't we adapt? That seems like the coolest thing left by far. That puts me on the amphibs. Now the amphibians are not speciating, but I can choose to do so later. I'm going to grab the first glaciation. See how that works out. Drive the glaciers away from me. That's kind of important because you get more points if you apply to next to other glaciers. So if I shove the glaciers down here into the mountains, they're not going to hit the wetlands as likely. Someone may really want to. The point difference isn't that great, but 
eh, it's an appealing aspect to get victory points, there's no question. And it's really becoming tough to find things now because there are less options available at the start of the game. The regression and wasteland boxes and depletion box, these are all empty. Uh, do I want to go into grasslands with speciation? Certainly not. Uh, migration, I'm not really terribly interested in that. Hey, look what I've forgotten. I want to score points. Shit, everybody's kind of screwed up and didn't grab their points here. Well, that's not good. Now the amphibians have one left. And yeah, everybody wants to score points in every turn, and everybody, uh, the, the red and blue players kind of screwed up. Uh, well, red and green kind of screwed up by not doing that. All right, now we're on to actually enacting these phases. And I should have some kind of marker to indicate uh, where I am in the player order. Let's use this. Oh. Use a die. To indicate that that's where I'm going to be. Okay, well now it's steps time. Time to start going through the actions. Now the initiative phase is quite simple. The amphibian just swaps with the arachnid. And now he gets his piece and gets to place it somewhere. He wants to put it in domination. He wants to score some points this turn. You notice one person gets screwed out no matter what. Two people chose not to worry about that, maybe to build for the future, and then chose not to place there. Actually, they chose to forget, but <laughs> whatever. Now we're on adoption. Black's going to go first on this. He gets to pick something he wants to add to his reptile. Now, his reptiles like grasslands, that's one of the options. Water, uh, that's not so interesting to him. And bones is an interesting option. What am I growing in? I'm growing in sun, which is actually going to give me an option of either the bones or the grasslands. Hmm. Interesting question. I would rather grow in the savanna. Uh, it's got a higher growth value. Oh wait, but I'm growing off sun. If I'm growing off sun rather than grasslands, I think I'm going to take the bones. And I'll add that to my portfolio of places that I like to live. And that just removes this. It comes off as you go. Now green gets to pick one. Well, Green's already fairly specialized in grasslands. I might want something else. I'm expanding into a water space, so I will grab a water one. The problem with this is I'm leaving a green one here, uh, which could end up going into the regression box. That doesn't hurt me necessarily. It actually hurts other people more, so I'm not really worried about it. And there are enough people to grab them all. Oh, no, there aren't. Now red gets its choice. Red's choice pretty simple here I'm sure they are picking to expand into grubs that'll probably be this one which means I'm interested in both water and grass but the double water looks appealing I'll take that and again these may not be the best choices there's no question here I'm just explaining my reasoning at this moment which is highly uninformed <laughs> Regression, there's nothing in the box, so we don't worry. So we go to abundance. Red gets the first choice. What do I want to make more abundant? Well, there's no question. I want to make little bugs more abundant. Where am I growing? I'm growing off bugs. I could add it to my jungle, but that's already pretty rich. I'm going to throw it down on this wetland and give me a growth opportunity in this direction. I've already got significant that way. And now we're on green. Green obviously wants to make grassland more available. Where do I want to put that? Again, where am I expanding? I'm expanding into the water. I'll put my grasslands over here. Glaciation. Blue's got a glaciation marker. Uh, I get to take a tundra. Now this is a complicated thing where I have to kind of look at the rules because I can't just remember this one. I often have to read it off. 
Um, first, I pick a tile that's not a, that's adjacent to at least a tundra. Now, which direction do I want to hit? That's a good question. I want to get away from me. I think this is the most away from me I can go. So I'm just going to go with that. All these tokens come off the board. And the tundra marker will go in the midst. All elements that are surrounded by three tundra tiles would be removed. Well, there aren't any. There's only two tundra tiles on the board. So nothing's going to be completely tundra. I'm going to get victory points based on the number of just existing tundra tiles. That's only one victory point. There's only one next to me. So this is the blue player. The M -thibs. Now, only one of each animal goes back. But because this is glaciation and not a normal other type of form. That goes back to the gene pool. And we still keep the dominance here because it, it's still in effect. The mammals still have uh, two bones. We take this off. <coughs> now we're down to speciation. And this is where we get to grow more critters. Alright, so we're looking here with the mammals who are growing on a bones marker. There's only two bones markers available. One's over here in the desert and one's up here at a dual tundra space. I'm gonna go for this one. This is where I was planning on going. I got shafted by that glaciation and probably I'm a little pissed at the amphibians right now. Each of the tundra spaces adjacent to this gets me an additional critter. And then, over here in the forest, I'm going to get three more critters. Or species. And that takes me off. This is good for building up for later. And this is one of the things is, do you want to grab your points now? Do you want to build for later? You probably want to do both things. So now, that leaves you with only one option. Unless you're one of the people who chose not to take that. By intention or otherwise. Uh, black. Black's got the sun. Again, a choice between two tundra areas where I'm only going to get one thing each or the savanna, but I've got this bone advantage, so I'm going to go in the tundra anyway. Because, see, what's interesting here, I missed this. This doesn't. Oh, yes, it does, because he's got double bone. He's got two bones on his track, so his points here are two, four, whereas blacks are only one for having one bone, but that's okay. All right, and then I also get the desert, which is not going to be terribly good either. I get two more critters there in the desert. Okay, that takes care of speciation for them, the yellows. The yellows are choosing a knot. They have choice between these two. They're definitely going to go for the jungle nuts. I only get one in the tundra. The forest gives me three. And the jungle also gives me three. Now the game rules do not insist that dominance changes. It's only if somebody notices that there's a change that it actually takes place. Once we get done with speciation, I'm going to worry about assigning the survival card. Uh, it doesn't have to be assigned at any particular time, but again, like these dominance markers, it just kind of helps expose the game state a little bit so that the players can be more aware. And it's hard to keep everything in line. Um, here I'm in a water space. I've got choices either to the savanna and wetland and tundra or the jungle and wetland. Um, I'm gonna go for the savanna and wetland. I get one dude here, in the, one little bug in the tundra. The savanna is gonna give me three more bugs and the wetland actually gives me four more bugs. So there are a pile of bugs there. 
And actually, I'm not sure who's in control here. Amphibians get 3 times 2 is, I'm sorry, 3 times 2 is 6 uh, water. Insects get 2 times 2 is 4 plus 2 water is 6. I'd say nobody's dominant here anymore. Uh, not because of the speciation, but I'm just noticing it at this point. Likewise, here I've got, because they're different numbers, initially it's fairly easy to see for most of the things, but the amphibians have their three water. Uh, here I've got uh, two grasslands times two is four, whereas I've only got three for the amphibians, so the insects keep their dominance there. And it's all this uh, constant checking and addition and everything that I think adds to the irritation level of the game for me. In addition to this, there's this numerical, not immediately obvious valuation that's going on. Now, that same valuation in Toronto X has to happen too, in the sense of, hey, am I better than him? But you don't have to constantly track it. You just keep it in the back of your mind, and if you are better, then it affects your, your attack decisions. But here it's constantly being updated. Um, or your cones are out of sync and somebody's going to notice them at scoring time or something. All right, on to the red. Red took a speciation in grubs. I like scrubs. Um, so clearly this one's out. This one or this one. Um, hmm, I actually have an interesting situation here where I'm the same as the insects, am I not? I have two grubs and two water. Uh, and again, you're constantly noticing, oh, I don't know what the hell's going on. Uh, and that, that's really disturbing to me. Okay, I'll pick this grub, I guess. It's frustrating when I start seeing that I don't can't understand the game state because it's constantly changing uh, and has to be updated constantly without a clear it's not clear to me the whens. I mean, I can look at it and say, yeah, it's whenever a uh, uh, status changes, but... Uh, okay. So, in a wetland, we get four more bugs. In the tundra, we only get one from speciation. And in the jungle, we're going to get three. So we're saying we're getting kind of richer populations here for the people who have chosen to do speciation much heavier point values. Uh, okay. Now we go to Wanderlust. And here, our little uh, amphibians have the first option. Now, out of all the things, the sea is the best. It has greater population growth ability, greater valuation than anything else. So what I want to do is I want to put the sea down, but my amphibians like water. So I want to put it next to a water space. Um, the only water I've got kind of available is right here. But I get to add another water, which I'll enrich this space with. Now, I think there's some movement ability here, which I probably forgot to mention during the rolls. But it sounds somewhere in my mind. Okay, now I'm going to get victory points based on the number of tiles next to me. There are two tiles next to me, so I get three more victory points according to the little chart here. And we're just zooming ahead. Oh, I forgot about the insect. He gets to drop an extra species on the board which, geez, I don't know, I'll put it in the tundra because it'll give me the lead there in terms of total number of critters. Uh, the desert might be more interesting, but I have more survivable stuff in the tundra, so that seems appealing. Did I miss any other of these specials? I don't think so. Okay, Wanderlust. So I get my victory points. Now in food chain order, and just food chain order, everybody can move pieces adjacent to that tile into that tile. Now food chain order says the mammals have to go first, then the reptiles. We don't have any of them. Birds. 
birds don't want to be here, they'd be endangered, so they're going to pass on that option. Uh, amphibians. Amphibians love this stuff. The question is, who else does? Well, arachnids do, and insects like water. Oh, grasslands is also on there, but only, only the, those options, only the insects. So who is this doing it? The amphibians. I'm not going to win the wetlands, and I'm not going to win the sea, but I'm going to put a person, I'm going to put one of my little amphibians out there in the sea. I'll get some scoring value off of that. I can't control either. Uh, I'm probably going to come in third on both as far as I can see, but I've collected some points here. And who knows, this may not get triggered. All right. Um, now I immediately dominate that area. So now we go to the arachnids. Now how do the arachnids feel? The arachnids are tied here for total number of critters and they're tied here for total number of critters. This is important because if we go down to the uh, domination there's an ordering to the scoring. Um, Ties will be broken in descending food chain order, which means the arachnid, who is what we're up to, will beat the insect, but will not beat the bird. Now, there's four birds in place. I've got five arachnids in the jungle. I don't have a choice to pick a victory condition location, though. And that's kind of a problem. On the other hand, so I'm probably not going to get a first place finish no matter what. What I'm going to do is grab a first place finish in terms of total number of sea critters. That puts it on the insect who gets the final chance to go in. Now the insect is beaten out here. So if he sends a critter out there, he comes in second place. He'd like to keep a first place in there if he could, although he and the arachnids are the two who aren't going for anything. However, if someone scores the water, he gets something. Hmm. He could go for losses in both places. It's hard to judge. Um... I'm going to send a couple in there and go for losses in both places. Now, let's make sure with all this movement that our cone stays there for the amphibians. The amphibians have six. The arachnids have two, three, four. Two for the grasslands plus uh, two different waters match their matter or match their water. And the arachnids only have two for the waters. Okay, so that's fine for them. Uh, and that gets rid of a wanderlust. Now we go to the birds who get to do a wanderlust. And there's a lot of thought in the wanderlust actions, right? Um, birds would also kind of like to grow a sea, I think. They're most interested in nuts. This is their nutty area. Nobody else cares about nuts. I'm going to build a nutty sea. I'm going to put this, the question is, do I want to put it next to Tundra? No, I'm going to put it over here and make my forest even richer. And then, nobody else can go in here, so I'm just throwing one piece in there. Now, there's a problem with this. If I move this piece, I am losing dominance of the forest, but the sea is worth more, and I only get to score one thing. I'm giving the humans, or the uh, mammals, a chance to score the forest where I'll get second place. So I'm making them an offer. You can get points, and you'll ri let me ride with you. But I'm getting the important points here. Do I want to send more than one thing into that water? That's a good question. Uh, having two pieces in a thing is useful because it gives me more mobility. I don't have to do a speciation to get more pieces in there. And then I can still do wanderlust and expand more. 
and I immediately get a little, little yellow thing. Nobody else is going in there. They'd die if they went there. Um, unless there was something that could change, but there isn't. All right, now we go to the uh, our mammals. And our mammals like bones. That's, in fact, the only thing they like. So we're going to want to expand bones. We don't have a lot of choices here. We'll toss a forest into place. Throw an extra bone. Hmm. So here's the problem for us. We're here. We get first place here. You know what? I'm not going to do this. I'm going to throw this forest into place. Put an extra bone there. Strengthen my position here. Now, what did that just do to this space? Um, I have four victory points. Birds are four survival points. Birds have six. Arachnids only have two. And luckily, there aren't a lot of these to start complicating matters. Once those start filling up these calculations, and they're really... You know, it's not like there's any higher math here, but they become really obnoxious to calculate continuously is all. So now, I'm ahead of birds in this forest, even if I leave just three in there. So I'm first on the food chain. I have to go in first, if I recall correctly. You know, I mean, there's so many different little sets here that I forget this. So what is it? Food chain order. Yeah. Okay, so now the reptiles, uh, the birds. The birds have an option. Well, I'm going to drop a bird in here, and birds are ahead of arachnids here. I'm going to drop a second bird in there. I'm now pushing out towards the boundaries and away from this tundra as well, which is kind of threatening. Uh, now we go to the end. Amphibians choice. They're not in here. The arachnids. Do the arachnids want to go there? Hell no. And no insects there. So that's the end of the wanderlust step. One didn't show up. That's going to get cleaned up later. Uh, nobody chose to do any migration. That'll probably change as the game goes on. Nobody chose to do any competition. But now we get to the scoring range, which is the domination. Okay, now, who's in control here? So, yellow is birds. They have two points. Mammals have two points. Uh, I don't remember who has domination anymore. Yeah, we gotta look that up now. Is there a tiebreaker? Because they have the same value of domination there, both at four, for whatever that matters. So, as a scoring thing, yellow wants to play this. And there's no easy way to really mark which one got played. Each one's only allowed to be played once. I can tip over my domination tile for that. That's C. I have the most critters there. Oh, look, I get nine victory points. Bam! I also have dominance there, so I get to choose one of these cards. And let's look over and see what we want. An immediate eyeball play for next turn. Uh, blight a tile. Gain a victory point for each tile I share with other species. That sounds kind of nice. I'd get one, two, three, four quick victory points, five quick victory points off that. That's appealing. Eliminate a species on each tile I occupy. That's a little violent. Each opposing animal uh, must eliminate one of its own species on every tundra tile. Now that is interesting. I could really cut down, you know, there's a couple here, but I could really cut this thing down in population. But I'm going to take the biodiversity. Now, this is just a single play card, but I immediately get, what, five victory points. I said one, two, three, four, five. That seems nice to grab some quick victory points. 
it is a game to raise those victory points, but you gotta be careful that you don't look like you're too far ahead because people might target you and you end up way behind because of that. That is my domination action. Actually, I can put my little disc here so that we don't, so that we remember not to use that again, and I think they suggest that in the rules. Now, our reptiles get a domination, uh, a, a chance to score. Now, this is a hard question because I've got a couple of places I could go. I could get second place in the tundra. Well, that's not worth anything. I could get third place. Uh, no, second place in the savanna, which is worth four, but I give seven points to the insects. Or first place in the desert, which is worth four and I don't give anything. I'm going to give the points in the desert. At which point I get four points, not a lot. Who's in second here? Well, that's determined in food chain order, I believe. So we've got the mammals who get two points for the desert. And then I get my choice of a dominance card because I have dominance here. Hmm. Which one? Well, I'm not thrilled with these birds. They're doing fairly well. I don't really want to bone my own interest in bone. I don't want to bone the bones with the bones. Yeah, that's a Toronto X thing. But I don't want to bone the bones because I am interested in them, even though other people are more interested. But if I, so if I picked this, it would wipe out all kinds of uh, tokens that I don't care about other than bones. That would be pretty devastating to a lot of people. What I was thinking of was just taking this one and knocking out these two nuts. Uh, but I think I can do a lot more by hitting this. And that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to take a blight. All but one element from that tile. So I get to keep my bone there. I'll do that. And you notice I've wiped out two other tiles <laughs> with that completely. I've really hosed an opposing set. And that's the kind of thing you should be looking out for. How, how hosed am I going to be if this thing happens? Because these are new environs that aren't very rich. Now, I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Because this is supposed to be occurring in a period where life is already in existence and fairly strong. And it doesn't feel that way. Uh, it doesn't feel like the last Ice Age. It feels like maybe the first Ice Age, just as life is developing or something. I don't know. Of course, you wouldn't have the diversity of uh, this particular list of critters in that case. But you can make pretend that you're talking about, you know, amoebas and uh, various little things in environments that aren't really forest and jungle because it actually fits the story a little better. It doesn't really make a lot of sense that the only place is right around the pole where all these critters live. Uh, Leighton, uh, you know, late in the history of life, i.e., what, maybe everything since like three billion years ago, <laughs> you would be seeing it covering most of the globe but maybe very, very lightly at certain points after major disasters. Anyway, that's the effect of our blight, and we've got to worry. We've got some serious endangered creatures here. <clears throat> we've also wiped some things out, so there's no more dominance here, and we're going to see some death. Uh, that was our nasty, nasty reptiles. And now our mammals would like to score something, they are now dominant here, and that makes that forest very appealing to them because it's worth more than the tundra. So I'll take my little disc and put it in the forest where I'm going to score five because I have more critters. And red and yellow, birds are above arachnids, so Yellow will be getting three. 
and scoring pretty well for now, but they took a big hit here, trust me. And two points for the Arachnids for their position. And now I get a choice of a dominance card. I can hurt some things. That's interesting. I can hurt the Tundra Tiles. Or I can get a bonus for later with the Instinct. This would really hurt the birds. Somebody's probably going to take that. I'm going to take the one that targets tiles I occupy. One of each species on tiles I occupy. That's going to take a red and a yellow. A black and a yellow. All of these. One of these. A couple of these. These are all in the dead pile. I'll sort them out into the bags in a little bit. But they're not in play anymore. They're gone from the game. And that's what the injury factor to this game is. This one doesn't matter. They're all dead anyway. All right. And finally, we go to scoring for the amphibians. And they have an interesting choice. Um... There aren't a lot of amphibians on the board because they didn't expand. They're not terribly injured. They're not going to get a lot of points here. They're going to get an option on one of these cards, but they maybe made a mistake by moving here rather than something else because the domination doesn't matter if you don't dominate an area. It just wasn't clear to them that they weren't going to dominate an area. Okay. So, what do I want to score? Do I want to score this C area? I'm going to get some points, but red and green will get more. How about the wetlands? Same kind of situation. I come in third there with only two points, but I'm giving eight, nine points to someone. That seems a little harsh. The savanna, that looks a little better to me. I'm still only getting a couple of points, but the points that I give out are less. Do I have to choose something with me in it? Could I just, I don't know bone in here in the tundra and by the way we might have a dominance issue here what do we have we have insects have two grass humans have two bones no nobody's got it okay um you know the question is do i want to just give a point to the mammals or would i rather give points to other people and ride along for a couple points. I think because of the difference of value, I'm gonna have to go with this and just give a point to a mammal and chalk this up to a bad move. The difficulty with that is I don't get a dominance marker. I would get a dominance marker if I picked the most valuable thing. Uh, what does a dominance mean in this case? It means I either get a play for next turn or a cold snap. You know what? The hell with that. I want something. I'm going to play in the C. I'm going to give victory points to other players in exchange for an advantage for myself. Um, and I'm probably going to just take instinct. That makes up, it's early in the game. I can afford to give victory points away and make other people look good. Okay, so that's my reckoning. Uh, the Arachnid scores top for the C and gets nine points. The Insect scores second, getting five points. And although they're tied, uh, we go in food order or chain order here. And I get third, getting three points. You know, I'm not doing too badly in the scheme of things because I took points from other things as well. Now I get my dominance chip or card, and I'm going to grab Instinct so that I can pick any eyeball I want. Now what do I want? Well, that's hard to tell because I don't know the current game state, and I don't know what's going to be happening here, but my guess is this is the best thing on the board, the Wanderlust. Hard to tell. Maybe it's Glaciation. That was kind of cool. It doesn't help me directly. 
but I got things started in the right direction on the glaciation. I get an early pick. I'm going with an all glaciation <laughs> strategy. All right. So, now we have finished the domination phase. We're going to be at the reset phase. I'm going to take a little break before I finish that up. And yes, this is a long video, but I'm going to do the whole first turn in one. Okay, so now we're at the final stage really here. Extinction, survival, and reseed. Um, and these are going to go in the box as well as the uh, other things. They're gone from the game at this point. I just didn't know about that one, and I still don't. All right. First, we worry about extinction, which is eliminating anything that's endangered. Now, I can get these off the board. They don't matter anymore. All right. Obviously, things are extinct if there's nothing living there, if there's no possibility of living. That's easy. <laughs> these have become really, you know, uninhabitable areas desolate completely for animals so everything's died out there but now let's start looking at some of the other stuff the mammals they are all existing in areas with bones so they're okay the reptiles they only have bones and sun but they're okay our birds only have nuts and all the nuts have been destroyed now, the birds have basically been knocked out. They took a lot of points. Now, they're not out of the game. They still have cubes that they can bring in through speciation. Um, and they also would get to continue playing even if this pool was wiped out as well. They'd still have actions they can take to affect the play of the game. So you can't be fully eliminated, but you can be put into a position where you're not going to be able to do much. You're not going to have critters on the board anymore. Let's go over to the amphibs. They like water, nothing but. They look like they're okay. Our uh, arachnids like grubs and water. They're okay there. Our s insects like grass and water. And they're okay. So we got some more cubes to get rid of, but we'll go to that. And those are out of the game again. Uh, who has the most species on tundra tiles? Okay, well that looks like it's the mammals. So they get the survival card. I should have handed it out earlier, but... Um, and now they get bonus victory points on the total number of tundra tiles occupied. Now they only occupy two, so they're going to get three quick victory points off that. And this is just kind of a, a bonus for being heavily invested in the tundra, being ready for the winter when it comes. Uh, okay, now it's reseeding. Now this is, we don't get rid of the cold snap, we just get new cards. Omnivore, gain one new action pawn. That's a new pawn. You'll be able to play more actions each turn. That's very valuable. So now a dominance action could be really strong here. Immigrants, each animal must choose one, lose an element, or lose an action point. An action pawn, I guess. Uh, eliminate all but one of, or eliminate all but one of their species on each tile. That's pretty nasty. Losing an action pawn is pretty bad. Losing an element, it doesn't seem like too bad a thing, but you can't choose this if you have no elements. Aquatic. Place an element of your choice into any sea tile or wetland tile. Place up to four uh, species from your gene pool there. Allow you to migrate somewhere pretty quickly. Biomass. Eliminate one species on each tile containing more species than elements. Remember, species are individual cubes. So here there's only four uh, elements and there's only four cubes. But in some places, uh, you know, like here, we'd lose two out of the three species. And those are just dead. So, that helps us feed out what we're going to see. We've got some other aspects to take here. 
if anybody was down here on glaciation they would move forward but that was placed specially remove all elements from regression depletion and wanderlust wanderlust we don't worry about the others this goes back in the bag because we're going to be drawing some counters very shortly uh, slide all elements in wasteland down to depletion there aren't any yet slide abundance down to wasteland okay so now we've got that wasteland possibility coming into play which if you remember allows you to hose elements I think off tundra okay if those remain action points will be to remove these if those remain uh, all elements from tundra matching those will be removed so bones and grubs are in danger and this is a reason to take abundance but you can't take all the abundance so there's going to be kind of a race over bones and grubs I think there and the spider goes first doesn't really want to lose that space so I gotta try to remember these things because I walk away as I play uh, adaption goes down to regression this one's now available to be removed let's remember what regression does find it okay the action pawns allow you to remove elements from this box um, no allow you to prevent an element from being removed now what's going to happen here is for each element type present you're going to lose a disk of that type from your display this is bad for who no one has a grassland right now so the insects have their defaults but they can't lose them so no one's really worried about that okay now we're going to place Four new adaption tiles, more tokens, more grubs, some nuts, a piece of the bag, more grubs, grubby nuts, uh, and some water. And now that's what's available there. The abundance also gets filled out. And finally, the Wanderlust gets filled out. The terrain tiles, we get new ones. A desert, an ocean, and an ocean. And now we're going to be planning for the next turn. And I'll set that up here to try to remind me of that. I love this one up. It's a long video. There's no question. But uh, I think we've gotten kind of a feel for how the system works. Now, what's going to be hard is I want I don't like to make such long videos for each playthrough. Or, in particular, I don't like to spend so much detail on playthroughs. But I'm not sure there's any story in this game. I think the only story about it is how you're maneuvering your pieces to win. You're not really worried about, you know, uh, trying to set up long-term goals on the board particularly. You're worried about trying to set up so that you survive and don't get wiped out like the birds do did there. You're worried about the interaction of these things, but it, it, there's no real, um, there's no clear insight into what's going on that can be provided that I like to do. Like, you know, hey, look, the Germans are moving forward on the east front here, and it looks like they're trying, you know, to, to garrison locations here. There's nothing that makes sense here. There's a game, and that's it. It's like uh, viewing a card game or a game of Raw. I don't know how to present it in any way other than play-by-play. Play. That's very tiring for me and probably very boring for you to watch. 
uh, if I could think of any way to improve on that aspect, I certainly will, but I can't think of one. Hey, do we have dominance here now? Probably not. I checked that. All right, up it goes.